Welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel. I'm Twisted Logic. Last night we were able to create a complete and working <laughs> dwarven shotgun. Excellent. Let's see how far we just shot right now. 60 tiles. We hit we gotta hit at 60 tiles. So there's one at 50, and then there's one at about 85 tiles right here. There's a colonite. Excellent. So each minecart can hold five stones. However, if we switch the if we switch to large serrated discs or uh, spiked balls here, we can shoot 500 at one time. And so we're we're creating serrated discs right now in the steelworkers workshop. And it looks like hold on a second. Did the cart return work? Let's see. I don't see the cart anywhere there. They may have they may have picked it up. That was the second test fire of this newly created cannon. Uh, the first time the minecart did phase through the wall, so I created another wall there. I didn't see if it phased through this time or not. Um, so the next shot we will fire uh, will follow the minecart. This this dwarf right here may be bringing. Yeah, place track vehicle lore. I missed it, but I see it phased through the wall again. So it's still phasing through the wall, so we'll build one more constructed wall right there. Just that one spot there. Um, so that's a normal kind of uh, quantum tunneling that happens with minecarts. Okay, so I have some numbers here. We can shoot five stones, or we could shoot ten logs. If we fill it up with bars and blocks, it's going to be 83. If we fill the minecart with minecarts, it's going to be 12 of them. Spike balls and other traps like serrated discs are going to be 500 as well as arrows, but I believe that the spike balls and serrated discs are going to be the best. And I had to create this wall on the upper level, the block pillar, in order to get that track to turn properly, as well as over here to create these turns. Um, so these are each barrel or... Um, each one of these tracks here is going to be a different cart once we add them all. Uh, but in order for this one to fire, it pushes off and it turns south. If you just kind of try to create this track without without this right here, it tries to go up and over. Or if you were to just kind of paste it in like normal, you would have a three-way track here instead of a track turn. And I'm not sure if it would go the wrong way or not. I'm not entirely sure about that. And we have a bunch of impulse ramps down here as well. And then down here at the very bottom, right before we shoot, every single one of these is an impulse ramp. I want to say thank you to everybody in the comments section of the last video who helped me out to figure this all out. And let me just build in a little bit of an example of how to create this right here. Oh, they're shooting it. <laughs> Let's follow the cart. Yes, excellent. And the cart return is working properly now. And let's see if it slows down at the end. Oh, okay. It went backwards and back up the impulse ramp, though. So I have to get a little bit more power right over here somewhere. Okay, yeah, that one too. See, this is how the minecart is supposed to be. It's supposed to bounce off of each other. Let's see. One, two. Okay, so it's going up like two levels. And then right here, uh, this is a track stop. So if I go to build, construction, track stop right here. Uh, this can, we can dump the carts with this. We can dump the contents of the carts if we would like to with this direction. So when it gets to the track stop, it's going to dump in a specific direction set right here. Or we can also set the resistance that the track is going to uh, apply to the minecart itself. So this one right here, I have it set at a, like minimal resistance. This one a little bit greater resistance. And then this one right here is the max resistance. Now we could make it loop. However, they do have to refill it and everything like that. And I'm going to like six or seven different tracks here. So we're just going to build a new impulse ramp right here. And as an example, I'll show you how I had to do it right on the other side. We're going to have to remove this track. So we're going to remove that part of the track right there. 
and the dwarves are going to come along and do that. And yeah, so this block right here I had to also use to get that turn right. So down here I had to, I dug it out, but I had to create a new fortification just so that way the, the track wouldn't kind of go over and it would go around in the in the pit that I had there. Oh great, so now with the new with the new construction removal uh, tool, it's also removing the ramps. Oh, we really got to forbid these carts. So they stop shooting them while we're working down here. <laughs> this one too, forbidden. Those carts are now forbidden until maintenance is completed. Okay, right here. So the new construction removal tool also removes ramps. So we have to rebuild the ramps. So we're going to go to build construction ramps and we're going to put the ramps back in right there any material is fine whatever is closest and then once the ramps are in then we can build the impulse ramp so as a refresher the impulse ramp has two different directions one of those directions is the direction that you want the cart to go and it's always a 90 degree turn and the other direction is going to be facing a wall the way it works is it uses the minecart's checkpoint effect and it goes to that space. It's a track ramp and the somehow the programming of the, the minecart thinks that it's now on another level entering the lower Z that it's already on. Okay, wrap your head around that. And that shoots it forward like at incredible speed as if it just came down a hill. Okay, so now all these upward slopes are completed. Up one level, build, construct, track, and then we're going to select that tile right there. Down just like this, so they're going to make that shape in the direction that we want the cart to go. Select the material, any material is fine. This one right here, we're going to cancel the construction, build, construct, track, and then oh, I picked a grate that time. <laughs> track. And then we're going to do the same thing just like that. Any materials fine. Cancel that construction. And do it all over again until we have a whole line of impulse ramps that are going to give this enough speed to shoot stones 80 tiles away. <laughs> and this is great. And then I'll show you what we discovered about the track return as well. And that may be because of, um, I heard that Dwarf Fortress was switched to a new engine. I could be wrong about that, but somebody had mentioned that in the comments. And um, it may be because of that. I'm not really sure. And then we're going to make the last one just like that. And we'll leave it uh, because, the, because that's not going to affect. Okay. And then if we wanted to, we can cancel all these constructions up here uh, with the tool. Remove construction just like that. They don't have to be there. We can build a wall over top of this. In the old way, you didn't have to do two levels like this. You would you'd do everything on one level, and it was great. Now we have to do another step. That's okay with me, I think. Yeah, I was testing out if the door would act um, kind of like the wall right here. Um, and so it does. So that, that door I needed to create there in order to get this impulse ramp to go in the right direction because it was trying to like go here and then over. What we discovered about the track return is this is the open space where the cart comes down. It's going to come down and then it's going to come down again and then it's going to come down again and this is the tile it's going to land on. Okay, so we had to have a couple extra tracks beyond it. We needed, we needed to just create a couple more spaces of track there and thank you very much to the person in the comments who gave me that suggestion. That's great. Now, the basis of the cannon is getting the cart to incredible speed, which this solves right here. And uh, it looks like some, some of them you can still kind of see through down to the next level there. That's okay with me. Um, but it's the whole point is to hit this wall and have a channel from the ceiling right here. This is the, the level that the cart hits, the striking the striking surface has to be large enough where the cart doesn't phase through the wall, and then that's going to go to the cart return, and whatever is in the cart is going to come up, and then it's always going to propel forward 
and you want to always do it through fortifications. Um, now we're going to build a fortification here and here so that way we can have a goblin siege in this room, in this kill box. <laughs> and we're going to need to make a path for them to come down here. Um, so we'll make some path that goes all the way to the surface and then they'll enter this room. We have an area on top where my Mark's Dwarves can march around the top shooting down at them in the kill box. And then the Dwarven Cannon. <laughs> okay, just to go over how we do the carts again one more time. We're going to have both of these forbidden while we do that so we don't have to worry about them firing. Now we could just seal off this room and make it so the doors can't even get over here. Or we could do it with forbidding. There's different ways that you can... I'll set that to dump by accident. Now it's forbidden. There's different ways that you can load these Dwarven Cannons. You can also have them push the cart and so it falls into a channel that lands on a hatch and then you have a lever that opens the hatch and then and then the cart falls onto tracks and goes to the cannon. That That's another cool kind of way to set these up. Uh, but we're going to go to this hauling menu right here. Hauling and routes and we're going to add a new route. Okay, route 7. And then we're going to add a stop to the route. This is a location where they're going to put the mine cart. And we're going to put it here on the third track down. Uh, there's no indication for that yet, but they're going to fix that in a, a, neck, a patch later on. Select this button right here next to the stop. And that's going to select the specific mine cart to go on that spot. Doesn't matter which one. This red exclamation indicates that it's that we have the cart, but it's not there yet. Okay, so they're going to move it over. And then we want to go to the conditions here. Clear out all the conditions. Add a new condition. This is going to go to the west. And we're going to switch uh, guiding. We're going to switch to kick. Okay, and then whatever percentage here we want of materials. If we want to do it with uh, weapon stockpile here, I suggest doing it low, 25%, because you're going to need like 500 something for it to be full. So we'll do 25%. Okay, done. Then we're going to hit the stockpile button here to link the minecart to the stockpile. And we're going to take from this stockpile, weapon stockpile. Now, when I'm in this menu, I can't move at all with WASD. And that's another bug that will be sorted out later on. And then the final option here is to select the minecart itself and tell the minecart what goods to accept. So even though we're taking from the weapon stockpile, we can go to this weapons and trap components uh, option here and select all and then go into the weapon subcategory and like remove all the crossbows from it. Um, so maybe those crossbows in the stockpile, but the minecart won't accept them. Okay, and then so whatever we want to set here. I think that we, we only have like crossbows, axes, and picks in this fortress right now. Because we didn't do too much weapon smithing yet. You just, once once you have all that set up, you just want to make sure that they're not going to move the entire bin into the cart. Because if they move the bin into the cart, that's a whole nother thing. Because the bin is going to shoot out, not the, they're not going to separate until that bin strikes something. So you need a two-stage cannon in order to shoot bins. And you also need a two-stage cannon in order to shoot like a cage full of cats or like a cage full of uh, forgotten beasts or something. <laughs> like once you, once you start putting animals in cages, you'll find that unless it's patched, you have almost an infinite number of animals that you can fit into one cage. And if you shoot that cage out of a minecart, it's like a uh, clown car almost. Of like a thousand cats coming out of a minecart. Or maybe you fill it with crocodiles, you know, whatever you whatever you can catch with your cage traps. Rimtar here is placed in the track vehicle. Excellent. Let's see. So all these serrated discs in here. Oh wow, they, they made a lot of them. They made it pretty quickly. I'm gonna go back into hauling. And uh, stop seven right here. I'm just gonna, we're gonna accept trap components of spike balls and large serrated discs. So we're gonna start accepting those. Okay. And then we're also gonna link a second stockpile, that one. 
So now two different stockpiles are linked to this one cart. Checking the track return right now. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I got to put a wall right here. You see, the minecart was going too fast to make that turn. So we'll build a wall right there to catch the turn. Uh, one tile should be fine. That's the way you make the cannons, though, through trial and error. You got to shoot it off several times to make sure your cart returns right. At most, 100%. Okay, we want to change that when full of desired items. Push off immediately when full of desired items. I set it to 100%. So that'll give them a chance to fill it with uh, all sorts of different weapons and serrated discs that we have. And then I will, once it looks like they're finished filling it, then I'll change that condition to something lower, like, or push off always. And then we'll see it shoot all the discs and the weapons and stuff. And uh, for added theatrics, let's add in a pen and pasture. Oh, okay, you see they put the bin in here. Uh, that's not good. Let's look at the bin. So inside the bin is all the serrated discs. So that's not going to work unless we have a double stage cannon. Okay, well we can see we can see what happens when we shoot the bin off. Maybe it's something changed. But we're going to turn bins off on these both of these stockpiles. So zero there and then also zero bins here. Done. Okay. Okay, just went to my main custom stockpile and I set a give to order to both of these stockpiles here. Uh, this one here, we'll, I guess we're going to shoot it um, so we can get the serrated discs out of the bin. Immediately always, 100% at most. So somebody's going to come along and kick that, so that way I don't have to dump the cart and the bin. Okay, so we're following the wooden bin in the cart. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you see how the the bin flew through the air there, and then it hit the wall, and then the disc sort of came out. Uh, but looks like we killed a cat, and we killed a stray dog. Uh, we're killing some stuff now, which is great. I like that. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to unforbid everything there. Oh, you know what we can do? If we remove this stop. Yeah, we remove that stop. So removal. Stalled for removal. So it doesn't actually stop right there. Then we take this furniture stockpile that holds minecarts. And we repaint it a little bit like this. Okay. And then build a wall right there. Anything. Then the minecart is going to stop. It's going to roll past the track there. It's going to hit the wall and stop in the stockpile. Mint. Route 4 here. We're going to change that to ride. <laughs> and then we're going to unforbid that cart. And let's see who the let's see who the lucky winner is. Oh, it's Addis. Okay, Farmer Addis is gonna ride the cart. We're following Farmer Addis. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's piles of vomit here as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you see how much distance we got here? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, about 55, 55 tiles. That's pretty good for a dwarf. <laughs> got some snails over here, some slugs. Let me hit that. I want to get that goose right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, this one, I gotta forbid this one, because I'm gonna have to reload. <laughs> oh, excellent, they're bringing all the spike balls and stuff in. There's the serrated discs. Yes. Okay, get that bin out of here, what's up with that bin? 
Okay, zero. Done. Okay, look at this. We're 16%. 16% in this cart. Uh, it seems like the... Oh, there... Okay. The graphic kind of glitched out there for a minute, but it's back. But it, we're at 16% about in the cart. And look at all the contents here. Okay, I think that's about all that I created so far. I didn't have them making... I didn't have them working on that job for too long. Change the condition. We'll pause the game first. Immediately always at most 100%. We can set that down. So immediately always at most 50%. But really it's push off west immediately. Uh, either always or win full. So we're going to set that to immediately always done. I guess this guess. Odin Solid. This is a Waterbone Buffalo Warhammer. Okay, we're following the legendary Warhammer and we're about to push the cart. Uh, somebody's going to come along here. Excellent. Yes. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos.